What's good, YouTube? It is your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Sports TV. And I am back with another video. Before I get into the video, go ahead and smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell button to be notified. Then head over to Instagram right now and follow me there at Colossal underscore Sports TV. Now let's get into the video. Y'all not about to like what I'm about to say. Y'all not going to like it. But oh well, this is my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to have an open dialogue in the comment section down below. But let's kill this narrative um, right now. In my opinion, Earl Spence Jr. is way more feared, way more ducked than Gennady Golovkin ever was. And I'm going to tell you why. Let's look at Gennady Golovkin. Who has he shared the ring with in terms of fights we wanted to see him in? Canelo, David Lemieux, um, Daniel Jacobs. Pretty much that's it. Pretty much that's it. Now, I've interviewed former WBO middleweight champion Peter Quillen about three or four or five times over the years. And I've asked him about why he never, you know, fought Gennady Golovkin. And his reply, his response was that, you know, they were lowballing. Gave him, offered him 500K, I believe he said. And what he told me was like, shit, if I'm going to fight a guy that everybody's saying is extremely dangerous, then I know he's extremely dangerous. Why am I going to take peanuts for it? He has a valid point, a valid point. And the whole narrative that these fighters were out here ducking and dodging Gennady Golovkin is false. Now, it may not be 100% false, but a big percentage of that is bullshit. And that's just what it is. We all know that Daniel Jacobs, before he let his nuts hang, um, was scared as fuck to fight Gennady Golovkin. But he had a change of heart. Went in there, and in my opinion, he clearly won that fight nine rounds to three, eight to four. But that's not the talking point of this video. He got in there with David Lemieux, unification bout. Pretty sure David Lemieux got in there because he was getting paid. Same with Jacobs. Of course, Canelo was the cash cow, so he didn't really need the Gennady Good Luck and fight from a, a standpoint of money. That was more so of a legacy fight, and now they're getting ready for the rematch. But the Peter Quillen fight didn't happen because the offer was a low ball offer. That's just a fact. Whether you believe what Peter Quillen told me or what I'm saying is, is irrelevant. Because I'm just going off of what Quillen himself said. You know what I'm saying? And that is a fact. It's always been speculations out there and rumors that Tom Loeffler, Good Lovekin's promoter, has low ball opponents that we've wanted to see him in the ring with. Hell, he didn't even want to go up to face Andre Ward at 168, but he was willing to go up to 168 to face Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Carl Frosch, but he wanted Ward to come down four pounds at a, and meet him at 164-pound catch weight. Now let's look at Errol Spence. Errol Spence is legitimately ducked by the other top welterweights in the division. We have all know that Keith Thurman has been on record saying that <laughs> he not focused on an Errol Spence unification belt. And this was when he was a two-belt holder. Now he only has one belt. He vacated the WBC belt, which is up on up on up um, for grabs September 8th between Danny Garcia and Sean Porter. Keith Thurman has yet to return. He has yet to return to the ring. We know that he don't really want no smoke with Errol Spence Jr. Stylistically, that's a bad matchup. Even though it's a fight that he can win, the body attack, the pressure of Spence is something that's not ideal for Thurman, especially a guy that's been out of the ring over a year now. Speculated to finally return, potentially on the undercard of Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence. Who knows with Keith Thurman? The motherfucker might split it uh, or sprain his towing and be out another two years. But still, Lomachenko and fucking Robert Easter Jr. going to be welterweights by the time this motherfucker return. But 
Keith Thurman don't want no smoke. Sean Porter, yes, he's changed his tune as of late. But before that, uh, you know, when, when Spence said that he offered him a fight for the IBF title, Porter going to say, well, uh, I'm not in the rankings. My dog, it doesn't matter if you're in the rankings or not. If a motherfucker offer you a title fight, you take that motherfucker. But I feel Porter. He feel that Thurman and um, Garcia are much more beatable. And I agree. They're much more beatable um, at this moment in his career than Errol Spence is. But that's a fight I still would like to see. We know Terrence Crawford, in my mind, in my heart, I know he not scared of uh, Errol Spence at all. He a bad motherfucker. And that's just being real. Number one pound for pound guy in my book. In my book, is Terrence Crawford. You see what he did to fucking Jeff Horn? Peached him up, knocked him out in the ninth round. You got Danny Garcia. I'm kind of iffy on Danny. You know? Is he scared? Probably not. But my boy, my bro um, from the Boxing Clinic and more, I was on the, on the live stream with him and some of the fellas. Shout out to them. Um, and my boy CJ made a good point. He don't think that Danny is necessarily afraid of Errol Spence. But he's afraid of being relegated as a co-main eventer. You know, Danny got that ego. His daddy got that ego. You know, he's a former undisputed uh, junior welterweight champion. Former WBC welterweight champion. He's been in the ring with Matisse, Amir Khan, you know, Lamont Peterson, Keith Thurman, Zab Judah, Eric Morales. You know, he's, he's definitely a very good fighter. Very good fighter. So, once you get relegated to co-main event status... That money started to look a little short-changed. Not because nobody fucking you over. That's because you your value has decreased. And that's in the back of his mind. So, while I don't think he's necessarily scared of Spence, I think that he, he's dragging his feet and he's trying to position himself well. So, when that fight potentially does happen in a unification bout, he'll get paid very well in a fight that he could win very well lose but you got all these other guys in his division Adrian Broner don't want no smoke with Earl Spence even though he's not a factor he don't want no smoke on Earl Spence <laughs> you know what I'm saying you got Mikey Garcia who has to call out Earl Spence or who is willing to come up from 135 to 147 to get that fight and you got Al Heyman, who going to pay these guys well to fight Errol Spence, and they still don't want it. Not Keith Thurman, not Sean Porter, not Danny Garcia for different reasons other than being scared. Call it what you want. It is what it is. He don't want to get in the ring because he don't want to lose that main event status. You know, Adrian Broner don't want it. Who else are you out there? Terrence Crawford wanted, but he would top ring. So that's another story altogether. Those are five guys, really four that we want to see him fight. But Adrian Broner, you can throw them in there if that's what you want to see him get his ass beat because that that's what will happen. But you got Mikey Garcia, who's been calling this motherfucking name out. I want Spence, 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 I want Spence. Yeah, Danny Garcia hasn't said that. Sean Porter hasn't said that. Keith Thurman, damn sure ain't said it. Adrian Broner hasn't said it. Terrence Crawford hasn't said it. And <laughs> it's a reason. It's a reason why. Yeah, these guys have said it too. I'll fight them, I'll fight them. But none of those guys, not even Terrence Crawford, has been outright with conviction and consistency saying, I want to share the ring with Errol Spence Jr., Earl Spence Jr. is a bad man. He's not, you know, unbeatable. He's beatable like every other man. But it's something about these fighters, man. It's something about him that make these fighters not want to fucking get in the ring with him. I don't know what it is, you know. But that's something he, he possesses over these guys. And Triple G, in his case, I think that narrative was overblown, overhyped. Few guys that that didn't want to share the ring with him, but I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you know, who is he trying to share the ring with now? Billy Joe Saunders is looming. Andre is looming. Jamal Charlo is mandatory is looming. 
he's not interested in fighting those guys. <laughs> you know, I know he's 35 years old. He wants the big money. Go get it. He's earned it. But after the Canelo situation happens in a few weeks, we're going to have to see you, um, you know, entertain some. You're going to have to fight the winner of Andre Saunders. You're going to have to. You're going to have to fight the winner of Derichinko Jacobs. Or you're going to move up. The choice is yours. But I think that Errol Spence Jr. is way more ducked and dodged and avoided than Gennady Golovkin ever was. Because you had Kelly Pavlik, who I think was on the winding down um, around the time that Triple G came irrelevant or became relevant, excuse me. Abraham, I don't think he was no longer at 160, but that was a fight that could have been made. Abraham was a monster puncher, tremendous uh, granite jaw, chin. Sergio Martinez, that would have been a fight that I would love to see when Martinez was healthy, the, new, the knees was good. I'd love to see him fight Paul Williams, you know, before Paul Williams, you know, had that accident. Those are guys he could have fought to show his worth, to have those guys on his resume, to show that he is who they say he is now. But, you know, it didn't happen. Uh, leave comments in the comment section down below. Share these videos all over social media. Um, go like my page, Colossal Sports TV on Facebook. I'll post the link in the description down below. i also post a link to... Um, you know, uh, new YouTube channel myself, Cali Enigma and CJ are doing for football. It's called uh, College uh, Football or College Sports, Sports Most Wanted S12, S10. Um, we're about to get that in full effect because college football is around the corner. Also, shout out to my brothers from the movement, 3 com. Check them out. Check us out daily for your latest and greatest updated, unfiltered, and unbiased boxing news reported the way it should be um and you know shout out to the ldbc man until next time i'm out peace